Okay, I just made my initial call. So we are going to leave the ground. Southbound towards Paso Robles. Airspeed's alive. Air's 50 knots. We'll rotate. Hold that attitude. Positive rate of climb. A little windy out here, not too bad. I get up to 600 feet here, I will start my turn. There's 600 feet. And there is the turn. All right, we are on our initial heading to pass the Robles of 150 degrees. Not quite due south. Kind of a south-southeast direction. We're going to climb up to about 3,000 feet and uh, just enjoy our flight down there. Looking down on the uh, display here, I don't see any other traffic around, but that doesn't mean anything. I just got to keep an eye out. I have a uh, moving map display here in my lap running on my iPad that will display traffic that have uh, ads be out. So they are displaying their position. However, not all aircraft are so equipped. So I'm going to keep a watchful eye. If I look paranoid, like I'm looking back over my shoulder and looking around a lot, that's why. So I always want to keep a good eye out for air aircraft. Especially since we have uh, Modesto Tower right over here to our right. So, I, you know, I'm going to switch over to Modesto Tower and see if I hear anybody over there. Pretty early in the morning, so probably not. Okay, there is my cruising altitude, 3,000 feet. So we're going to level out. Pull the power back a little bit. Let everything stabilize. Well, we are cruising along here, 3,000 feet at about 97 knots ground speed. That's about 100 miles an hour, a little over 100 miles an hour. 105, somewhere in there, pretty close. A few weeks ago, Actually, probably about a month ago now, I made a, a video while I was flying around up in the foothills kind of talking about my uh, how I got started into flying. And I come to find out that I didn't have the audio hooked up to the GoPro. So it was a great video, but I was basically talking to myself. So I thought I'd tell that story again. Once upon a time, I uh, 
used to work in Sunnyvale, over about 80 miles away in the Bay Area. San Francisco Bay Area. Um, and I commuted with a guy whose brother was a pilot, and their father had passed away, and they were going to go out and spread his ashes over the Pacific. So my friend's brother rented an airplane, and they went out and spread their father's ashes. Well, he said, yeah, you know, as long as we've got the airplane rented, would you like to take a ride? I thought, yeah, I love flying in jets and stuff. I'd love to fly in a small airplane where you, you can actually see. And okay, great. So we made the plans, and uh, the weekend came and went. I did not hear a word from them. So a week went by, I did not hear a word from them. And my buddy that I carpooled with called in sick. No explanation. Ah. So as the next weekend came, I was pretty mad about it. I wanted to go for an airplane ride. So I started calling around. Finally stumbled across this place called Sierra Aviation in Oakdale, California. They said, yeah, sure, come on out. We'll give you a ride. So I went out there. My name is the Tower of Atlanta, 72315. We're ready for takeoff. 28 left. We'll request right turn out. 72331, driver with Dexter Retter. Uh, runway 28 left, there for takeoff, a right turn on course of crew direct to Oakdale. Uh, wind is 3106, our turn was 2986. Uh, somebody flying out to Oakdale. Speak, speak of the devil. So I uh, made arrangements to go out to Oakdale and uh, went out there and showed up and the guy said, yeah, come on out, the airplane's ready. So we went out to the airplane, an airplane very much like the one I'm in right now. It's a little two-seat Cessna. This is a 152. The one I took my first ride in was a 150, model 150. And uh, so we went out there and we sh walked around the airplane, showed me what everything was, what everything did, ailerons, flaps, elevators, rudders, only one rudder. Um, and we got in and uh, he, he said, well, here, you, you sit over here in the uh, left seat. I'll sit in the right seat. So we got in, he starts the engine, we taxi out, we take off, and oh man, this is great. So as we're climbing out, he says, go ahead and put your feet on those pedals down there, the rudders. Go ahead and put your hand on the yoke there. Said, okay. He says, well, how does it feel? He says, oh, it feels pretty good. And then he takes his hands off the controls and feet. He says, okay, you're airplane. Traffic, uh, to take thought, wow, this is great. So I'm flying oh. around. He tells me, okay, turn over this way, and we turned out, we went out to our practice area, what I would later later learn is our practice area, out over Lake Woodward. We went out that way, and he had me do some gentle turns, and just fly this way, that way, just, just having fun. And um, so then we come back, and he has me fly through the pattern all the way on to final, and then he says, okay, my airplane, and he goes ahead and lands it. And uh, man, I thought that was the greatest thing. And he goes to the display case, and he pulls out a logbook, and he writes in, you know, however long we were out there. I think it's like half an hour, you know. And he wrote what we did, turns, banks, you know, climbs, descents. And wrote his name in there, you know, as the CFI, and handed me the logbook. He said, there you go, there's your first flight. And uh, he says, we, we, we give flying lessons here, too, if you're ever interested. And, oh, boy, was I hooked. I made my next appointment for the very next week for my first flying lesson. And uh, about nine months later, in fact, right after my wife gave birth to our first, my son, uh, I was uh, I was a newly minted. I was a newly minted private pilot. So that's how I got started. And whatever happened to my friend? Well, it appears that they uh, they got weathered in up at some airport on the north uh, northwest coast of California. We call it the Lost Coast. I think it was Little River or something. And wherever they were, they. He didn't have his cell phone with him, so he couldn't call me. And 
Um, he didn't know what my phone number was, so whatever. <laughs> So I rented airplanes for a while, and it wasn't too long before a friend of mine on the field had a uh, an old vintage airplane called an Aronka Champ that they put up for sale. It was a tailwheel airplane. The little wheel in the back under the tail. 50 years old. It was really old. Tube and fabric. When you wanted to start the engine, you had to go out there and spin the prop. I went ahead and bought that airplane from him. Boy, I loved that little airplane. I flew that thing all over. I got about a thousand hours in that airplane. I flew it up to Oregon and almost to Washington. Flew it all over California. And we used to land in all these little tiny strips and stuff. Just loved the heck out of it. And then um, my buddy started building something called an RV-6. And an old guy at the airport showed up with something called an RV-4. And I sat in that RV-4 and just fell in love with it. It felt like sitting in a fighter. And uh, all my friends were, you know, it would take me forever to get wherever they were going, and that was no fun. So, I uh, sold my champ and bought an RV-4 kit and began building my first airplane, which took five years. Five years of having a beg, borrow, or rent airplane time while I was building. And uh, I finally got the RV-4 built and flew that and absolutely loved it, too. It flew so great. Nothing, the easiest airplane I've ever flown. Easiest to take off, easy to land. The thing went, you know, almost 200 miles an hour, so you could get wherever you were going really quick. I flew it to Oshkosh, Wisconsin from California twice to go to the big Oshkosh air show. That was enjoyable. Um, but then I started, um, started getting into this uh, backcountry flying again. I, I just, it never left me. I couldn't fly into the little strips I loved. And meanwhile, my friends with the fast planes had kind of moved on. They either had stopped flying, moved away, uh, sadly, a few of them died. And uh, so there I was in my airplane flying around the Central Valley at 200 miles an hour. Um, going nowhere fast, basically. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I used to do in my champ that I really enjoyed was I landed at a little golf course just north of Oakdale. Um, it was a private strip, had a private strip on it. We landed right next to the 4th Fairway. And I used to land there and play golf every week. I just loved doing that. I couldn't do that in the RV-4. So I decided I wanted to build a slower airplane now that was modern. I could start the engine sitting inside the airplane. I didn't have to spin the prop. And um, I could still you know, go back and land at the golf course like I used to. So I sold the RV-4 and built something called a RANS S6. S6ES, actually. And, um, yeah, I'm just getting a little air going here. I built that, and I loved that airplane. I flew that all over the place. Um, flew that to Oshkosh once, and from Oshkosh, I flew it down to Oklahoma, and then back across Texas and Arizona, and back up here to back home. I loved that airplane. Then I got to the point where... You know, I'm going to be retiring soon, and my wife and I are going to buy an RV, and we're going to travel full-time. And um, I've got all this airplane infrastructure. I had a hangar that I had built. I had, had my airplane, and I was spending a lot of money on it. So I thought, you know what? It's time to find, instead of trying to find a way I can spend more time with my airplane, I need to ty find a type of flying that uh, can come with me when I travel. So then I started getting interested in powered paragliders. Was watching those on YouTube every day. Couldn't get enough of it. Decided I had to have a powered paraglider. So I, um, as fate would have it, I had a landing incident in my... Paradise traffic system, 621, six miles to the south for a full stop. Paradise. I had a landing incident in my uh, RANS, which... Pretty much totaled the landing gear and totaled the underside of the airplane, and 
Due to the cost of repair, the insurance company totaled the entire airplane. So they <laughs> sold my airplane to the insurance company and I had money to buy a powered paraglider. Um, plenty of money to buy a paraglider. So I bought one. Bought a really nice one with a trike and learned to fly it. And I was enjoying flying that. But one thing I could never get used to was um, the turbulence in it. You know, you'd, you'd swing, you'd twist. And uh, it seemed like that shouldn't bother me. It didn't bother the other guys, but it bothered me. And plus, to be comfortable, I had to wait until there was zero wind outside. I mean, no wind days. And uh, that was kind of no fun. So then a friend of mine, who also is a pilot, flown into a lot of backcountry strips with, said, uh, well, you ought to get yourself a powered parachute. It's a lot more stable. So, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So I sold the powered paraglider. Sold the paraglider and I bought a powered parachute. Um, Six-shooter P3 light, which fell under the Part 103 ultralight rules. So I flew that around and uh, that was kind of fun too, but it was... Again, uh, I could fly it in a little bit windier conditions, but still, to be truly enjoyable, I had to wait till there was no wind. And uh, this is California. There's very few no wind, no turbulence days here in California, um, even in the morning. So I, I kind of did some soul searching, and I really missed being able to just go fly when I wanted and where I wanted, and not just flying from the same airport, flying around the airport and landing at the same airport. I wanted to, to travel cross country again, much as I'm doing right now. So I did some soul searching and decided, yeah, I need to sell the powered parachute because it's it's really not, not what I wanted to do. So I sold the powered parachute and I joined a flying club back at Oakdale where I learned to fly. Um, Sierra Aviation had long since closed down. Um, but a local group of pilots had started an, uh, an aero club with three airplanes in it, including this little 152 that I'm flying now. And so here I am. I decided, you know, I wanted portable aviation, so I got the parachutes, the paraglider, and really the most portable <laughs> version of aviation there is, is renting. Um, you just show up at the airport, you hop in the airplane, you fly it, you go home. There's nothing to transport, there's, there's no annuals to track, there's no 100-hour inspections to track. Um, well, not that I had those on my airplane anyway. Okay, there is somebody nearby that I cannot see. I am going to turn. Look for him. There he is. Same altitude, opposite direction. Worst case. All right. I'm going to get back on course. Yeah, I just happened to look down and see my little doohickey starting to flash yellow at me. Always want to keep your eyes out and always scan in the horizon for airplanes. You can't really rely on this. And uh, it's pretty hazy down here, so luckily I had this to help me. Um, otherwise, I would not have seen him. We wouldn't have hit, but it was uh, it was closer than I like. So at any rate, I am now renting and really enjoying it. And all of that has taken about 27 years. <laughs> that entire flight history I gave you is uh, 27 years of flying. So I've enjoyed it. My wife is glad that I enjoy it. She, <laughs> she doesn't like to fly, but um, that's okay. Not everybody has to like it. Well, we 
got a whole lot of nothing for a while, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the camera to sleep for a little bit, and we'll catch up with you guys in a little while. Well, I thought I'd give a little update, turn the camera around, let you see something besides my face. We're uh, crossing over the uh, Diablo Range that's uh, on the west side of my valley uh, between us and Paso Robles. So um, this is always interesting flying through here. Luckily it's a calm day, so it's not going to be too bumpy. But um, this is some very rugged terrain. Definitely something you wouldn't want to have to walk out of or try to land in. So, uh, yeah, I try to try to cross it quickly and get uh, from flat to flat as quick as I can. So that's what I'm doing. So anyway, just thought I'd give you a little view of where we are and uh, where we're going. Catch up with you in a little bit. Turning base, landing runway one, pass robot. That's my buddy Dennis. Land in there at uh, Pass Robles, where we are about to land. So I am entering the pattern, and uh, we're going to get this thing on the ground. Paso Robles traffic, Cessna 895 is left downwind, runway 1, Paso Robles. Experimental 5 Delta Bravo on final landing one. Flaps 10. Paso Robles traffic, Cessna 895 is turning left base, runway 1, Paso Robles. Experimental 5 Delta Bravo, clear the acting. Check for traffic on final. Paso Robles traffic, Cessna 895 is turning final, runway 1, Paso Robles. Laps 30. Maintain about 60 knots. Stabilized approach. The wide runway, so hopefully I don't flare too high. Flaps up. We'll roll out to the taxiway up here. Open a window, let a little fresh air in.
Go check to see back over here, see if I can find where Delta Bravo went. I think I see him over there. Paso Robles traffic, 895 is clear of the active. Paso Robles. Paso Glasser, 327, 10 miles southwest and down Paso. All right, we'll catch you guys later. Paso Robles traffic, Cessna 2489 or 5 is departing runway 19er, left downwind, Paso Robles. Okay, airspeed is alive. Fifty knots, fifty-five, rotate. Hold that attitude. Positive rate of climb. Six hundred feet above the ground, I'll go ahead and start my turn on course. Rebels traffic, Centurion 250, chairs 15 south, 3200, got the one minute weather, any other traffic in the pattern? 
Aircraft calling past the Robles. This is Cessna 24895. I'm uh, climbing out, going through 2,000 up to 5,000, uh, headed southbound. I'm about uh, oh, two miles from the airport now. Centurion uh, 250, yeah, we got you on the scope. Uh, and what's your heading? I am heading about 340 right now. Here is going to enter a wide, white base, runway one. Matt Valley traffic, Skyhawk 24 entries on extended right downwind for runway nine right south. That's what drives the Centurion 250. Here is five miles south, will be uh, straight in, runway one. Uh, Centurion inbound for uh, runway 01. Uh, how far out are you? Uh, five miles. Where are you? Uh, we're lined up on 19 on the ground, ready for takeoff. But uh, we can hold for a minute until you get on the ground. You're looking. Right. Well, left downwind runway 19. Uh, Trouble traffic. Centurion 250 here. It's going to enter a left downwind runway. Left downwind runway 19. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, Past Rebels traffic, Citabria Orange, Citabria 86872, uh, entering 19, and will be a left crosswind departure. We're looking for the Centurion on the way in. Past Rebels. Past Rebels traffic, White Husky is going to taxi from uh, West Hangars Delta to Alpha for 1019. Taxi yeah, traffic up to the Fort Victor, 7 miles southwest, 1800 northwest bound. And pass the traffic set, uh, or excuse me, the top here, 86872, we're on the go, and I got the Centurion on the downwind, pass the robles. Morning, Kendall. How's it going? Pass Robles, Trevig, Cherokee 52 Romeo, lining up on 19, straight out departure, pass over. Well, as you can hear, Pass the Robles woke up. Pass the traffic, Centurion 250 here, is left downwind, runway one. Well, I'm going to be climbing up another 500 feet or so to clear these hills. And there's not going to be a whole lot to see until I get closer to the airport. So. We'll go ahead and put the camera to sleep, and uh, we'll catch you guys in a little bit.